Good morning, Year 5. So you've got me today for your English. Um, today we are learning to develop initial ideas drawing on the reading we have done. So using our knowledge of the Daydreamer, the different chapters we've looked at, you're going to start to bring together your ideas into a plan for your writing. So you're going to plan your narrative, your daydream. You should have a good idea now of the characters. So we'll have Peter and you would have planned to have one, two or maybe three other characters who are involved in that daydream. You should also know where your story is going to take place. So you could have looked at Peter's house or Peter's school. So you had the choice and you would have come up with some ideas for that. And then you will have also thought about which object you were going to use. Okay? So that object is really key because that's what's going to send Peter into his daydream. Your plan will need to be a note form also. So your notes will then be turned into sentences when you do your draft of your paragraph. Remember, this is a story. The narrative is going to be in past tense and it's in third person. So it's already happened, you've done it. And it's going to be Peter that we talk about. We're telling the story of Peter, we're not Peter ourselves, okay? So for example, Peter stuck his hand into the filthy drawer. He did this, he did that. So we're talking about things he's already done. So try to think about that when you're planning, okay? Because that will really help you when you come to develop your sentences. So, this is the planning frame we've got. It looks the same as the ones we've already used in writing this week when we've mapped out the ideas of the other chapters. So there is the beginning. This is the part of the story where Peter is in reality. Okay, This is his normal life. He finds something, an object, or there is and a key thing that then prompts him into that daydream. Okay. Then we have our middle section, which is the daydream. What's happening in the daydream? Who's involved? What's going on? And then we come to the ending, and Peter comes out of the daydream, back to reality, and what he learns. Okay. So we're going to have a look at just thinking about what we can put into each part. I'm going to look at the Vanishing Cream chapter that we already did, just to show you how the different parts fit in. So in the beginning, our first part, we have got Peter. He is, in reality, looking very bored, it's a hot day, and he then thinks he's going to come up with an invention, so he goes to that drawer, doesn't he? So. to write. So Peter um, is bored. Hot day. Remember this is note form so I haven't got to write in full sentences at the moment. Okay. Where is he? He's in the kitchen and he's at the drawer of random items. Okay. the kitchen um, drawer of random items. Okay, so that's getting established the reality, what's going on for him. Then we're going to think about what he's doing to then start to head towards the daydream. He's searching in the drawer, isn't he? his hand into the drawer searching so he's searching in the drawer okay finds the tub so we've got our reality established what's happening there and then when i'm writing my paragraph I'll be able to develop these ideas into 
sentences with a lot more detail about how Peter is feeling and what he's thinking about doing. Your middle bit is where he's starting to daydream. He puts his vanishing cream, what does he do? He puts his finger into it, doesn't he? And then he notices his fingers disappeared. So we need to put that into note. Okay, so open jar and notices tip of finger disappeared. Yeah. So fingertip. So notice fingertip. on and he's like what's this mm, what can I do with this and having dealt with all his family's mess decides he's gonna go and make them disappear so the first person he makes disappear is mum so we're gonna have on there and he goes outside because they're in the garden there we go garden and he offers mum sun cream quite a good disguise for what he's doing she disappears Dad next, isn't it? And then Katie. Kate. Okay, so once they've disappeared, he's then left alone. He goes and tidies up, doesn't he? He wants, goes around the house tidying everything up. And then he has his tea where he's having lemonade and cake and sweets. So, Heidi's house has tea, okay, um, and then he hears a strange noise, he's a bit scared, he ends up going to his bedroom, can't sleep but then does, so, scary noise. him, can't go to sleep, but then he does, he has a, a nightmare within his daydream. Wakes up next day, and he decides he's going to create a booby trap, so he goes down to that drawer of random items again. And that is when Kate comes, he doesn't realise at first, she, he gets touched on the shoulder, realises it's Kate and she comes out of the daydream. And Kate touches him. Says he's been there the whole time, he's just been standing at the drawer. family ask him to come and help with the hovercraft. Okay, family want help. Okay, so we've got the three parts then of our daydream planned out. Okay, so when you're doing it make sure you use your mind maps that you've come up with and think about the characters, the setting and the objects. Okay. And then when you've got your plan, this might be quite um, a fun idea, if you're possible, try and act out your plan, act out your daydream with someone at home, um, 
to get people involved in reenacting your plan. Okay, so this will really help you to bring your daydream alive for when you write it. Think about as well whether you can add any speech to your plan. Now you've acted it out, you might want to go back and just add in any key bits of speech that came up through that acting. Well, have a good time planning out your daydream, thinking about the characters, the setting and that object and what was happening and refer back to remind that speech bit. All the rest, easy to